it is fantastic to be here. Um, I'm actually from Bristol, but I'm actually from Manchester um, via London. So um, I work for BBC, as we always said. Um, so I work in R&D. You might know that actually BBC has a massive R&D department. And you think, well, what does R&D do? Well, we look at a lot of radio, TV, stuff like that. But um, my role is this kind of fire starter role or troublemaker, as I sometimes call myself. And I like to look at what, where the future is going and where, you know, what we can do to actually influence that. So um, I'm going to talk about the future of TV. So this is actually our illustrious leader, um, Matthew Postgate. He's the head of r and I'm not the head of R&D, just to be that clear. Um, and he talks about broadcasting. We kind of have a bit of a... Um, uh, yeah, we have a little bit of a discussion now and then, you know, kind of... He talks about how broadcast is great, TV's great, you know, um, all this stuff. And I'm kind of going, no, 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 we just scrap it all, you know, S screw it. Let's just go all internet, you know, we don't need all this, this legacy broadcast stuff. And so off the back of that uh, and that discussion, um, I think he's kind of hinting that actually it's all about, the broadcast is all about, you know, to be able to hit everyone. Everyone is that same message. That is such a great thing, you know, about to tell one story to the world. Yeah, that's what it's all about. However, it's my viewpoint is that it's a one-way communication. Literally, you're hitting everyone, everyone's going, no, stop, stop, stop. You know, or no, I don't believe in what you're saying. And there's no kind of um, there's no way of kind of communicating communicate back. Um, now, obviously, that's changed slightly with stuff like Twitter or Facebook and all these other things, but the general mechanism doesn't work. However, the BBC has a public purpose. You all are hopefully um, you know, paying your licence fee. You all should be. Um, and you know, our public purpose is to tell you know, great stories, in, you know, chanting and engaging stories to everyone. We're really good at doing that. We're really good at finding people and kind of bringing them together and telling these great stories. And, you know, the ability to tell one story to everyone is fantastic. Seems like, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. You know, why would you want anything different? However, I say let's change it, you know. And so this discussion between me and Matthew and other people, um, you know, started to kind of start, th start thinking, well, you know, Maybe there's something good about broadcasts, and there's something good about you know, the internet and IP technologies. We can combine the two together. So let's change the rules. Now, I'm going to take you a step back, OK? Remember the days. You all must have been there, OK? Uh, where you're, you're at your, it's kind of a warm day or a warm night, and there's a campfire roaring, and you're thinking, you know, Oh, let's see, yeah, some people are singing, people are, you know, kind of, you know, chatting, and then someone goes, oh, I feel like telling the ghost story, and everyone starts listening, and everyone's kind of listening, and, you know, this person's really getting into this ghost story, and you're really getting sucked in, you know. I would say that is the rawest form of storytelling, you know. Um, that's what storytelling is really about. It's not about telling the exact same story to everyone. Because the, the thing about it is that that person who's telling that story is looking around, like I'm looking around right now at the room to see, OK, this person's bored, this person's not that interested, you know, that person's really engaged. So you kind of then change the, the, the stem of the, the um, story or the narrative depending on what the people actually are doing or thinking. So this is what happens. Um, that, Broadcast basically did away with all that. It's that same story to everyone, no matter even if they're interested or not interested. And that's the problem I see. So we lost the context, the, the mood, the body language. We lost all this stuff you know, in this move to go towards broadcast and tell the exact same story. And that seems a real shame because you know, that's what storytelling, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is all about. So I'll give you another example. Um, I use this, this comedy conundrum. I actually said it right, which is good. Um, and so, you know, if I stand up on stage like I am now, and I say, hello, Bristol, you know. Um, now, 
when a comedian kind of gets on, they're thinking, right, okay, I'm in Bristol, I need to tell some stories about Bristol, I need to think about some of the experiences I've had in Bristol, or some of the friends I've had experiences in Bristol. And so what they're doing, actually, is their location. They are customising, not personalising, because this technology, which I'm going to show you, uh, can be easily you know, seen as personalization, and it's not, it's about customization. You know, the person who's telling the story still has control, okay? They choose when to put in elements um, that make sense to you. So, it's storytelling, the storytelling is about the variables, you know? You might have seen these books, you can kind of send off and you can get a book uh, back and it has your child's name in it. And when the child reads it, they go, oh my God, this book's all about me, you know, which is really, really interesting. So I'm going to basically show you this thing called perceptive media. Uh, well, I'm going to try and show you this thing called perceptive media. Um, and it, it really is about that kind of campfire metaphor. It's about kind of that telling the story, but to, a, you know, the whole world rather than just a group of people around a campfire. You might have seen some stuff in the past um, which has been on the web. This is really early stuff. And, um, so stuff like the Arcade Fire, Wildness Downtown, the Intel Museum of Me, um, there's one missing, which is um, the um, Blue Lollipop or something like that, um, which is kind of, was quite big on Facebook for a while. Um, these things are really, really early. They're kind of the same concept, but not quite. Ah, there you go. It's a blue light bulb. Now, this is all very old hat online. This is all, you know, you can go to a, you know, a site and it will serve you adverts which are tailored to you or customised or personalised just for you, you know. But that's because the internet is a two-way medium. You know, how can you do this over broadcasts? That's the interesting part. Because scale is the, is the name of the game. You know, we need to be able to scale it. You know, once again, our public purpose is to serve to everyone that's out there. You know, everyone, all you guys, all license fee payers should get the exact same thing or same experience. So what we've done is we changed the game. Well, I've changed the game. Um, so what we're doing is we're breaking the media down into pieces and we're serving it all to you and then we're reassembling it on your side. I'll make a bit more sense of that in a minute. The key thing about it is that the, you know, the power behind um, when you're sitting in front of the TV or you know, with the technology you have in your hand, even the technology in my pocket right now, I have a quad core um, you know, phone. That is enough power to run full HD and to maybe manipulate media in real time. So rather than we do all the hard work at our end, we send all the assets and we change stuff on the fly on the other end, on your end, you know, which is very interesting. There's a whole push towards sensors in the, in the, room, in the city, uh, living room right now. And that's where you can get really interesting because not only can you send the assets and play them back on your end, um, but you can start to change those assets or change things based on sensors. And obviously, Samsung are very inter interested in this, um, this kind of smart TVs and stuff like that, but it doesn't even have to be you know, sensors like cameras. It could be you know, just having your phone on a, on a desk and, you know, or you know, there's a whole bunch of different things you could do. And this is stuff we're exploring right now. So what we're looking at is we're looking at not the, the, the um, explicit stuff, so like typing into Twitter or into Facebook or anything like that. We're looking at more of the implicit actions, the stuff that you do. So the fact you're sitting back, you know, um, says something. The, the fact you're sitting forward says a lot more as well. And all these things can feed into a show. So you can imagine, you know, there was a big hoo-ha about the Brian Cox um, Mysteries of the Universe. Uh, a lot of people say it was too loud um, and, you know, it was too experimental, experimental. Um, and so the key thing is that if you were sitting forward, maybe it would give you more facts and it would be, a, the music would kind of mellow out a little bit. If you sit back, 
then you get the, the true experience, you know, you know, kind of stunning sound effects and lots of visuals, that kind of thing. That's the kind of idea we're thinking about. So, yeah, we, we all generate tons and tons of data. Just the fact you're looking at me and you're sitting back and you know, you're doing something and you're all generating some kind of data. So if we can harness that, then we can do some amazing things. So why is this important? Because, you know, I'll actually I'll do a poll. So how many of you guys, when you're sitting down watching TV, how many of you guys have got um, one or more device um, in front of you? Hands up. That is pretty much everyone, OK? 10 years ago, when I spoke to um, you know, TV producers, and, and they asked me, how do you watch TV? I said, well, I kind of sit down, I have my laptop on my lap, and I'm kind of like my phone, and you know, I'm chatting to people, and I'm looking over the TV to see what's going on kind of now and then. And they were totally shocked. You know, why would they want to do that? You know? And now we're all doing that. You know? And so basically, the TV has become like wallpaper. You know, and that's the key thing. It's like wallpaper. It's not, it's not like, it's more like radio, where you have the radio on and you tune in on things. So you hear something. So it's like if something comes up and it says Bristol, then you kind of go, oh, I live in Bristol. Okay. Or green or something like that. You know, there's all these things that just, these little, these little triggers almost. Um, I won't spoil it for you, but there's seven. Uh, if you've not seen seven, you should see it. It's very good. Um, this is a great quote um, about hitting people with a sledgehammer um, to get their attention. And that's what it's about. It's about the attention. You know, we know we can't get you for all the way through a, a series or a show or anything like that. It's like getting you at the, the key points, you know. Now, we don't think we need a sledgehammer. We think we need, all we need is a little tickle. You know, here and there, little tickles, you know, right inside, you know, the little kind of, oh, Bristol, okay, you know, Clifton, fish ponds, you know, all these things. And you're like, oh, what, what was that? You know, and that's the key thing. So it's about being highly relevant at that right moment. So I won't spoil you, but if you've seen uh, Seven, you know what's in the box. For the detective, that was highly relevant, you know. <laughs> Um, there's this great scene in Vanilla Sky, um, if you've not seen it, but um, so when I watched, watched it the first time, I watched it and there was a scene and I was like, oh, that looks, for some reason that in my head that looks kind of familiar, you know, and I just kind of didn't think anything about it. And then later on, it gets revealed that actually they're using visions of his memory to, um, to change the, the scene. And so, you know, my dad had the Bob, the Bob Dylan album. And so when I was young, I used to you know, root for his albums and records. And I, and I, I everybody saw it for like a split second, but somewhere in my head, when I saw that scene, you know, I didn't know where it was, but then that I made the connection. And that's what we're talking about, is that level of attention. So, I'm going to play some clips, if I can remember how to get to the clips. Ah. Someone? There we go. Right. So, um, I'm just going to play them. And what we're doing is, I mean, it's the exact same clip, uh, about four times, but I'm using different music. Some of the music may appeal to you. Um, I'm kind of more of a dance fan, so maybe not. Um, but, you know, you'll see the different, you'll get a different atmosphere from the exact same clip, but with different music. So this is the original. Um, it's from uh, a TV series called uh, F uh, Flash Forward. It's oh so quiet. So you know you've kind of got a feel from it, right? It's you know it's kind of working. It's kind of. So I won't spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen it. It's actually quite a good scene. Right, here's another one. This is what I've done instead. So imagine we send all the clips and then instead we recognise that you are into 
um, you have yeah, Moby in your, your music collection, you like it, you favorited it, so we put Moby on instead. I get a different feel again. as well still it's not like it's completely alien we're not just picking just some random music we're picking music that does work with the scene okay, I'll do one more so does anyone recognize this music no no way okay well, this is from run the run which is very interesting because then, you yeah, know, it kind of stirs up memories again about Rondo to Run and uh, yeah, how this seed is, stuff like that. This is the kind of thing that we're looking to do and it's a, it's a bit of a, it's, it's kind of quite shocking when you actually think about how you kind of, you can manipulate it through just the music, you know. Yeah, exact same visuals. Oh, I'll play this one more. So if you're into dance music, this is like a fantastic song but it still works with this scene. Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in you know, the air. You can air. see how it kind of like, I know how it works. I can count on you. And if we know that you're into dance Sometimes music, I feel like saying, you know, we can Lord, do I this. We can actually care. put this stuff on but top because it's happening on your side. Okay, so. Sometimes it seems the going is just. Right, back to the presentation. The key thing about it is that it's narrative, but it's on rails. Yeah, we have control to a certain extent. We just drop in different bits. We're changing it in little ways, not just not kind of like branch narrative type stuff. We're not doing that kind of thing. We're doing very subtle little bits and pieces. We're changing reality, basically. You know, how about a picture of you instead of that person? You know, we could do that. Yeah, with perceptive media. So we actually have a demo. Um, I can't show you, unfortunately. You kind of need to listen to it yourself. It's a 10 minute play, and um, I did some feedback. It's futurebroadcast.com. Um, it's still up. Check it out, listen to it. You need a quite a decent machine to play it, but it does play. And we're, we're basically doing this, and it, it, will, it will basically change depending on your location. And so we're basically, you know, storytelling like you've never experienced before. And this is what we're, we're aiming for. And in the future, we will change reality. And that's what's shocking. Thank you very much.